Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Shay. I'm going to have a look at a deck that uh, I haven't really used. Um, but I purchased it a, a number of years ago. Maybe it's hard to know. Maybe four or five years ago, maybe. And it's an interesting deck. And it's called Omega Land Tarot Deck and Card Game. It's uh, U.S. Games, I think, isn't it? Yeah, uh, published by uh, U.S. Games. This is the box created by Joe Bajinski, game by Karen Bajinski. So it's a game too. I I didn't didn't remember that. So, uh, I, this is sort of a post-apocalyptic. Um, <laughs> which is not the best of, I guess, of decks to look at at this point in our civilization. But anyway, so let's have a look. I just uh, took it off the shelf, and hopefully it's in order. I would imagine it is, but let me see. It's... Okay, there's the deck. Look at the, uh... well, we'll look at the back of the cards in a minute. I, th I think the backs are kind of interesting. And... Oh, it is, no, that's not just, oh, the booklet, of course. Looks to be uh, all, all in the English. Goes through the cards. All right, so, okay, so there's the booklet. And... I guess this is maybe the rules for the game that you can play with the cards. Major powers. Oh, oh yeah, see? That's interesting. Worth minus five that they're holding it in the game. <clears throat> so that's a, a game, and uh, but it's a tarot deck as well. So let's just put this away. So the the backs are interesting. Look, the backs look like just like a wooden, uh, either a door or a crate or a pallet, something like that. And uh, they're although they're not they're not um, edged or anything. They sort of have an interesting little bit of a a brown border on top but the cards are and the card stock is fairly thick it's it, it would be hard to uh, riffle this deck i think but i'm going to give it a try but <clears throat> well well i don't want to riffle it now of course i was just about to because i hope yes it is in order so these are the cards and like i said they're sort of post-apocalyptic so here we have someone on roller skates skating down the street. I don't know if that's a booze bottle or, but he has his knapsack, so very much a uh, fool motif. And the cards have a uh, antique uh, no, I wouldn't say dirty, but antique splotty. It's uneven to the cards. And the magician. With his wares. The high priestess. So, if you want to learn some stuff, secrets, you go see this person. Oh, all the gas masks and stuff. Well, I hope our civilization doesn't get to that that extent, huh? Eh? <clears throat> the Empress always makes things grow. Abundance. That's a nice, nice card. The Emperor. Mr. Children. 
He's boss. His rules are, are out the door. Out the door you go. Oh, that's interesting for the Hierophant. You know, it's a teacher, though. The armed. You can see the traditional uh, meanings that if RWS, uh, the Rider Waite Smith system, <clears throat> can be uh, can be attributed to this. Of course, those that re read intuitively, it would be interesting because it seems like it's such a strong motif of, you know, life after societal, well, crisis. Lover's card. The drawing is, um, I forget the style, but I, I like it. The chariot is a tank. Looks like it says, oh no, it's Liberty. I, I thought it, said, it looked like Uber. I think, what? <laughs> they had predicted Uber. Because if, if you look at that, it looks like Uber. But it's, but it's not, it's L-I, Liberty, I guess. I don't see the Y, that looks like an E, but interesting. Strength, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Strength in this deck, obviously, strength is eight. Injustice will be 11. I haven't seen these images for, you know, for five years because likely what happened is that after I got to the deck, of course, I'd go through it and look at all the images and put them in the box and put them away. Shame. The Hermit. Very much traditional like in the in the energies that it uh, projects that is the wheel of fortune yeah that's interesting i guess it shows the uh, people gambling with uh, various resources food water I'm not sure if that's just meat, maybe. And money. It's an interesting picture. There's someone getting... Oh. She meted out justice. It's getting what you deserve. So obviously, if this justice card, this individual deserved to get that. Although, no one deserves to be have their life ended. Hangman. Oh, well, that's I'm trying to figure. Oh yeah. Well, looks like that guy back there is taking a shot at him, and uh, I caught him in the trap. So. With most hangmen um, uh, images, these hangman images that I'm not too familiar with, I always turn them right like this so I can have a look at what's going on in their face. So, no, that's not someone that that has, you know, serenity or calmness. Yeah, so this is like getting stuck, I guess rather than seeing well you see things from a different point of view but usually you have to have some sort of malleable mind at that point that you're able to be receptive but if you're in that kind of state you can't really be receptive but it looks like this guy's taking a shot at him oh death looks like uh, dr death Well, let's, you know, it's, there it looks, uh, the death in the traditional, in the finality of death. But, you know, we know that this death card is like a, a transformative card. And, uh, but, uh, 
I don't see anything that's too transforming unless this person's transformed after the death of this person. Temperance. Obviously, look, she's filtering water. There, oh yeah, she probably has sand or something in that container and filtering the water through. Purify the water. So that's a, a interesting meaning, although purification isn't exactly what I think of temperance. I think of temperance as a moderation. I guess she's moderating the poison, maybe, but the pouring from the, that's a traditional, from one vessel to another, that's a traditional symbolism. But it, re, it really means this, you know, to take the, the middle pillar, pillar uh, path or the, the middle way. You know, rather than one extreme or the other, is take the the middle path. All right, so oh, this looks. Look at that, the devil. Well, let's have a look at these people's faces. Well, it's hard to know whether that's agony or ecstasy. And. Kind of same with that. And of course, that's the devil. Um, yeah, these are things that, uh, this is a good symbolism, uh, because, uh, well, I guess they maybe gave him a little bit of horns, I guess. And, uh, but th uh, the symbolism is those things that bind us, you know, the, that capture us like that. Keep us off our path. Interesting image. There's a lot of those things that do that. Keep us off our path from getting involved too much in alcohol or drugs or other things. The concerns of this world. The tower. Now, what's this guy going? What's this? So quite the explosion inside, from inside out rather than outside in. Like, you know, but it's still the tower experiences. I, I always, you know, characterize it as a kick in the stomach. It's a realization that your world is not what you think it is. The star is about hope. There she is refilling her vessel with water, refilling her emotional vessel. If that comes out, it's a wish card. Um, but if it comes out, um, well, I don't know, the wish card's the nine, of, uh, the nine of Cups, but to me, this is a wish upon a star, too. And it's a card of healing, of course, recharging your batteries. But if it comes out, usually it means that there was something like this in the person's life sometimes and they require that the moon well this is look look at the images the big tongue oh this some stuff i don't even know what it is Oh, look, stuck a for stick a fork in you and see if you're done. And I guess they literally did it. And all these images up here. See, this is this is definitely moonscape stuff, right? This is dream symbolism, all that stuff, the wacko things you see in our dreams. Yeah, so this is uh, it's an interesting card, and uh, I think the artist did a great job on that. That's our fears, our lunacy. The triumphal hunter back, providing, just like the sun, providing food, in other words, providing life. Yeah, this is success. Judgment. Rise up. Yeah. It's an interesting depiction of judgment. 
Oh, the world. What's this guy? Is he looking through binoculars? Yeah. Looking at us through the back. He has water. She broke through the wall. The world. Accomplishments all nice and neatly wrapped up. Look, she has a nice, she has a gun there. <clears throat> so the suits are, are um, the suits are, are traditional. Um, they are wands and, uh, and cups, swords and pentacles, but the, the emblems are different now. I don't remember what I, I well, well we'll have to see them when I get to them. But so the obviously the uh, the wands uh, and 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 I believe that the elemental uh, associations are traditional as well, where wands is fire. And so the 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 element here, uh, the symbol is a gun, or you know, pistols. I think. No, just guns in general. So the ace of, of wands. They don't call it guns, so ace of wands. And the numbers um, uh, I th have to do with the uh, the game that you can do with it. But I think this deck would read uh, a haunting, hauntingly well. Because the, especially if you read intuitively, along with tarot, you know, knowledge. Uh, I think you'd find this, uh, uh, I wouldn't say spooky, but sobering, I think. I don't see any whimsy in this deck. So the Ace of Wands, two wands. Twos are about choices and couples and deciding to go on the path together for a little while. Not quite holding hands. But uh, looks uh, there been some war or something in that city. Three. Is, are these the same people? Well, the clothing's different. It might. Mm, well, I can't see them changing like throughout like that. So the three, that's an interesting for three ones, but four ones. There's always an association of stability, home, stuff like that with the four of ones. So I can see that motif there, but it doesn't always mean home though. But it's the Things, concrete things that we build, four walls. But it can mean other structures, businesses sometimes, celebrations of something. It's interesting though. Family together. Five of Wands. Oh. Well, yeah, that's, uh, well, there's quite a lot of damage there. Struggle or <laughs> competition, but there's a little bit more. I guess competition over territory. Strife, struggle. Six of Wands. Oh, so there's the victorious people coming. That's one of the meanings for the six. Six of Wands to me is like victory and stuff and success, but it's 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 leadership is a big is a big energy in that card too. That's why a lot of times you see people behind the at least that's what Pixie Smith did in the uh, the most of these clones on copy, right? You know, three people or people behind the leader. I think it's a card of success, but a card of leadership. Seven of Wands, that's, uh, yeah, taking a stand. It's interesting, too. Eight of Wands. Wow, look at all the, all the, how 
hope it doesn't get to that. Oh. So, anyway, the Eight of Wands. Eight of Wands is, well, this is just obviously driving fast because the air is going into a car really fast. So she's driving quickly, and there's a quickness about, uh, oh, there's probably, and there's probably seven there. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, there's eight. At least eight there. The eight wands, eight guns. So there's a quickness to that. Usually if, um, it's it's something arri like news arriving or mail or something something that's already in the air, already happening. Wheels already are already turning. Uh, the nine. Yeah, that's a, uh, you can look at this and see a very traditional meaning. You know. The bandage on his head, the palisade. Well, this is a wall. And just getting ready for the next shoe to fall. It's already been some. Maybe that person's asleep or that's blood and someone dead. Ten of Wands. Yeah. That's, again, a traditional type of image. Someone burdened down with a load of wands, in this case, guns. A page. Page is in, this page announces its announcer. <clears throat> it's interesting. He looks young and active. This is what a page should be, a little, maybe a little younger. The because usually is a it's a, that's a traditional role in the uh, British hierarchy, but way back when, and there I think all the knights may be on motorcycles. Here's an idol. <clears throat> Looks a little bit like um, what was that uh, that comedian Rip Taylor used to come out with and throw confetti. Kind of looks like him. You can't unsee what you see. Uh, there's the queen. She she knows how to. She gets things done. This one. Yeah. Want it done? You give it to Queen of Wands. He gets it done too. It's a nice picture of him. But, uh, he looks very Amish, but I guess he's a. Uh, Homesteading. Now we're going to the cups. Now we're going to the the emotional universe. Basic cups, a big canteen. Two of cups, again about usually about choices and Choices in friendship, perhaps. Choices in where to go, where to start out. I think, you know, I'm not that very, very intuitive. Like some, some readers I've encountered, and some on the on the YouTube are just amazing with their intuitive reading. Three of Cups. That's a very good traditional. I always view the Three of Cups as a friendship sharing. Networking too. That's a traditional four of cups. What is the person in the back doing? Oh, he's uh, stringing barbed wire. How lovely. <laughs> you can see he's stringing barbed wire. Uh. But this is, uh, you know, when your passion sort of leaves a bit where it just, you know, you just get, well, that's this. Too much structure. Four is not good in a flowing suit. Five of cups. Well, to me, this is a card of regret. So maybe they regret drinking it all at once. <laughs> 
he looks ill. Looks like he might have been shot. Oh, that could be Band, uh, clothing. Six of Cups. Carefree. Here. With Six of Cups, you know, it's uh, it, it, it's interesting. It's I find it's one of the cards that people glide over too fast. Because there's a lot of stuff within the energy within this within the Six of Cups card, you know, and the memories and all that. But it's it's this deep seated need for security as well, and it's so do we go back to times, you know, um, where we've uh, felt secure in our childhood. For those of us who were fortunate to experience that. Oh, so that that fellow must have got all the way here for the barbed wire around the camp. So this is security. So this is a secure area. So reinforces security again. And they're just running around the kids. Seven of Cups. Oh. Look at all that. Boy. Oh, look. Looks like there's, wonder if that's a, uh, falls in there and goes right into there. I don't know. It's interesting. And, uh, well, to me, that can't be, you know, fantasies. That must be possible outcomes, maybe. I don't know. Gets in there and gets out, or maybe falls in. But, there doesn't look to be too much choice. Looks like there's many other people have made the wrong choice. Because we see at least two, fa three faces in there and a, and a couple of hands. So he's beckoning. Hey, come follow me. This is fun. <clears throat> well, you know what to me. You know what this guy's doing? He's sitting in the back of his truck, mulling over. He doesn't, he doesn't like his life. You know where he is. He's not emotionally fulfilled. That's sort of the feeling with that Ada Cops. And don't you get that feeling from him? Yeah. He's got to move on. He go this way once. Nine of Cups, that's the wish card. Well, she looks like she's pretty content there, you know. And uh, she has lots of water. Kind of remind me what the motif would be for uh, a card that I don't know. I, I have no idea what the image is going to be, but the Nine of Pentacles or the Nine of Coins. I think it's coins in this deck. Interesting. Because it looked like, you know, because of the the way she's all um, in this card, <clears throat> she's all, she's taking care of herself, you know what I mean? She's not, she has everything she needs. She's not relying if she's squatter. She looks probably like got food. Toilet paper, which crazy people are hoarding now. I have no idea why. Ten of Cups is... To me, is a satisfaction. Yeah. Good day's work. <laughs> Page. Yeah. Pages. Pages are function in uh, an interest. Well, have an interesting function, I think, within the tarot system. And they're often, you know, the pages of the princesses. Um, they, uh, you know, they're, it's a new energy, all right, but they, they seem to function as omens or harbingers of things to come, you know, where the page of wands was harbinger of news of something, you know, that you're going to either hear or maybe even read, but a lot of times that you hear it, it's spoken. 
uh, this uh, this page sometimes heralds uh, news that, uh, and sometimes most times it's written, but it doesn't have to be, and but it's usually emo um, news of an emotion emotional issue or something that you would react to emotionally. Yeah, they're all, I guess, so far, because he's on a bike as well. The Knight of Cups. This is the, is it Lothario? This is the guy that loves courtly love. Loves falling in love. They're nice. They're kind. They're sweet. And then they're gone in two weeks. <laughs> the Queen of Cups. Well, these are very nice people. I've already talked about the Queen of Cups and several of the other videos, have been, how they are being reflectors. Yeah. I like the the way it's drawn. It's sort of, well, it is cartoony, but it's not uh, amateurish. It's, I like the style. It has a hauntingness to it. The King of Cups, these are nice guys too, but they tend to, want to stifle themselves and their emotions. It's interesting. It's king of the shelter. So now we get into the swords. And I guess the swords, wait now, the cups were what? Oh, the cups were canteens. It duh. <laughs> And uh, the swords look like they're going to be arrows, stuff that flies through the air. Yeah, crossbows, or, the, or I think that's called crossbows. All right, so let's have a look. It's, again, uh, <clears throat> yeah, he looks like he's looking through glasses. The beginning. Two swords. <sighs> well, what's behind him here? Hippo, and what's that say? Looks like P-A-C-H-E-S. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> so, usually you know, there's choices with twos, but I guess which way to go. But it's usually a little deeper than that, not just a, a, for, a, a fork in the road. It can be, <clears throat> it usually involves a decision that's a little bit more difficult because it, it almost causes fractionation within us because it puts our heart and our head against each other as adversaries. Then who wins the decision? Three of Swords. Well, looks like he's... Uh, Well, it looks like, uh, well, he looks like he's grieving this lady's death. And uh, I guess it was by this guy. He was shot by this guy. An eye for an eye leaves everyone blind. All right. And I don't think that I don't think people quote the Bible. That's not in the Bible. Four of Swords. This is good. I like this because they're both resting. This is mental rest to me. You know, period of mental exhaustion, or sometimes this means the hospitalization or even retirement or surgery the bully card oh they're begging for mercy and he's shooting them anyway well i guess that's sort of extreme but going somewhere a little less stressful Huh, it's one of those uh, shelters. 
I wouldn't know why you would want to do that. Just drag it out, you're going to die anyway. <laughs> if it comes to that. Or live in misery. Go out with a bang. Seven of Swords. Well, if you look at it, it looks like he's creeping out. You know, look with their per bag, has purses and stuff. So this is symbolizing, you know, literal theft. But again, I, I sp spoke about this in another video. It, to me, it it means um, in holding secret plans. Usually those secret plans are secret for a reason. You know, a lot of times they aren't either ethical or... Or whatever, and I guess that that's what that reflects. The Eight of Swords. This is uh, wow. His eyes were put out. Well, uh, to me, the Eight of Swords is always, a, you know, being in a situation where you think that there's no way out. But usually, of course, we all know is there's a way out. And a lot of times we put ourselves in that situation, these those situations. And uh, so here we have, uh, I don't know what, I don't know what this guy's story is, but it doesn't look too good. I don't want to put that too close. Nine of Swords. Well, very, very similar to the uh, to the uh, Rider Wait Smith deck, where you have <clears throat> well, this person looks like a sleeping, but you know, swords weighing down on you, worries, it's of the mind, and this is a good depiction of the Ten of Swords. There's no happy ending. There's no. There's going to be a brighter tomorrow. You know, there's some people look at the RWS card for the Ten of Swords. They say, well, look, maybe the curtain's going up, you know. Well, I don't know. To me, it means it's done. Fully cooked. Move on. Page of Swords. This is the... Um, although they now... The, like I said, they all announce the stuff happening, but... This guy announces to himself, really, because he's, he's a little bit of an information gatherer. So he can announce by gossiping, you know, telling his parents of what uh, an older sibling had just been, what he just caught him doing or something. But these are the information gatherers. One of the, um, one of the nicknames for the Page of Swords is the Spy. I really like the way that the artist did the deck, though. And I like the backs. I think they look pretty sharp. And they look like we're having a, a lumber yard here. The Knight of Swords. Yeah, very brash fellow. And they're all on bikes. I like to show a lot of air. Queen of Swords. This... She knows what's going on. She'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah, she'll tell you. She won't mince any words. The facts. Nothing but the facts. And there's the king. Huh. These, uh, these guys are usually, you know, lawyers, uh, judges, scientists. So there's an intact building. What if that's a research center? Aquarians. Oh, it looks like the coins are going to be cans. Hmm. You think the cups would have been cans, but the cups were the canteens. Okay. Well, this is the ace opening up a delicious beef soup, or maybe that's just the canned meat. Two of coins. I guess it is going to be cans. Uh, the need for balance in your resources. Three of coins. Well, that's interesting. So he knows what he's doing. You see, he's uh, he's uh, the master craftsman again, but he knows what he's doing. 
who's going to make electricity from three cans of Campbell's soup. Hooray! And run the whole whole town. Four of coins. Well, I, I don't know where he got himself into a pickle here. You see, he's sitting on a safe. One of the one of the terms for this card is the miser card, so I can see maybe having the motif of the safe in there with the four cans. And but he seems to be locked in. And uh, the four coins, fours don't do well in the passive suits, both the cups and the <clears throat> excuse me and the coins or pentacles are passive suits as opposed to the active suits, the wands, fire, and swords, air. Those are active. The passive suits, earth and uh, water. Four seem to be problematic in those suits because of the structure. Because both both water or motions symbolized by water, you know, if it doesn't flow, it stagnates, right? You can't just have a glass of water sitting on your counter for two or three weeks. It's going to get pretty gross looking, stagnant. So it needs to flow, and so does and so does uh, money. If this is uh, symbolizing money, that uh, a coins, because to me um, the suit of pentacles or coins is a suit of security, which is usually referenced by money, but it's not always. We we find security in 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 a lot of things, but a lot of, a lot of it's money, but not not all. But the the fours in this suit as well are problematic because although this is material, right? It's earth, but the idea, but the money itself, the 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 dollar bill, the piece of paper, that's worthless, right? It's worthless. It's the idea behind it, what it represents, which is usually. Now it used to be a dollar's worth of gold. You ask anyone nowadays, what does a dollar bill represent? And they'll think that it represents some fraction of gold. No, it doesn't. They've long since Richard Nixon took took uh, the United States off the gold standard. It represents a dollar debt. Gross. Yeah, money is fiat currency now. Anyway, I digress. So, but it's an idea of of money, right? It's it's an idea. It's a concept. Money is a concept. So it's almost like like um, the sword suit in a way, uh, where it's air. You know, it's thought, air, so flowing. So I think you know a lot of times in uh, in the uh, uh, these suits that anything that's that's uh, constricting is problematic. And the five of coins is being in need. His cans are all empty. Yep. But usually there's some avenue of help around. So I always, I, you know, when that comes up from people that are having these financial problems, you know, you know, make sure you do tell them with, if this card comes up that there are, there are. I haven't had it happen where someone said there wasn't. But there are helps around. So that could be, you know, family help, church help, institutional help, governmental help. But there's help. And the six. Food, a oh, food ammo. Oh, look, this is backwards, of course. So it's a food and ammo, I guess. And he's looks like he's serving soup there. I don't know if he charges. With the six of coins, there's a generosity, a giving of resources from one level to another. So I take it he may be doing this for free. Maybe not. Seven of coins. Well, it looks like he just came came and uh, did some harvesting. So he had, um, so he had a good harvest with the seven. Seven of of coins, seven of pentacles, is a card of assessment 
for me. And it's usually, we're usually not satisfied with what we see. But card of assessment. Look at this fellow. That's, he's trying to get, he's trying to rob, but look. There's a grate there. He can get his hand down, but he would never. It's like the monkey puzzle. Isn't that the monkey trap? Where they do that? They put the. The monkey won't leave go of the. And so he won't leave go. So he's trapped in there. Trapped like that. It's almost like that. But the Eight of Coins is about learning to make money. So this guy's maybe learning to take money rather than make money. Yeah, that's an odd, because I, I never get thievery. See, he has one eye closed, so he's looking down. So maybe he didn't get one, maybe. Yeah, but he shouldn't be doing that, that's not. The traditional meaning for the eight of coins, it's busy making money. The nine. Nine is independent. Did it myself. So, well, she's taking care of her own business. She found some abandoned food and she's putting it in her knapsack. And I noticed they don't, they don't, they didn't, I don't, well, for me, I find that there's a loneliness with this uh, nine of coins. So, interesting, there's no other people in this card, you know, so other cards of people. So I wonder if that was just coincidence. No such thing as coincidences though. Ten of coins, this is, oh yeah, look, they have everything they need, right? And they're selling it. They have so much, so much, they have so much that they can afford to sell it, sell some, make money. That's a good, a good way of looking at this. This is security attaining security so now we're going to the court cards page this is the student and this looks like the fellow on safari <laughs> yeah learning egyptian hieroglyphics or something yeah interesting i like the i like the way that the, the artist drew Knight of Coins on a bike as well. Eating his coin. Well, it's funny. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to think of, you know, why why the the artist would pick for the suit of coins would pick that symbol of a can. Because I would have done that for I would have had a hard time chosen between, for example, for what to illustrate the cups in this suit, in this uh, tarot deck, you know, and then I would have maybe thought about choices. Okay, we can use the can or canteen, which one? But I wouldn't think the coins I would use the can. In a roundabout way, I guess the money buys food. I, I don't know. Can't eat money. <clears throat> She's there eating money. So that's kind of odd. And the, finally, we have the king of coin, the king of money. Well, his kingdom looks pretty sour now, but he looks to be in pretty good condition. He's got a compass watch or something on there, so he, you know, he's very practical. These guys are very practical. So he's got a compass, he's got his, you know, his stuff in here, he's nicely dressed, he's got his bedroll nice, this tucked away, his hair combed, Brits, you know, his, his uh, <clears throat> beard and mustache trimmed nicely, no unkemptness there, just a reliable guy. Anyway, that is my look at this deck. It looks like a real thick deck though, doesn't it, look? It's a thick deck. So I'm going to see, I don't know if I've ever riffled it. So I will do that now for you. I don't think so, because each of these feel like a full deck. And they're a little bit 
Oh, well, there can be. Usually I like to put the... Oh, well. Okay, so let's... Let's do um, a quick three-card reading, if I can get the cards randomized enough. Oops. And uh, let's ask... Um, well, I don't want to ask about the virus and stuff like that. I'll ask. I'll just ask something about the cards. Um, uh, let's ask maybe um, what uh, what uh, the nature of this deck is. Like, what is the energy? And then uh, also what uh, it can teach people. Well, that's too general. I'll say because everyone learns t uh, differently. I'll say how, uh, what it would teach me. And, uh, and then maybe what type of, uh, how I will regard the deck, which is a way of seeing, <coughs> am I going to use it? So let's have a look. But it is, um, it is, uh, the cards are a little thick. I th well, I don't know if you can see it. It's not like huge or anything, but, but they're, an, it's a nice card stock. And I think when they, because of course this deck has not really been used, but I think if it was broken in a little bit, it would look kind of, you know, as they wore, because this would look a really interesting back. You know, especially if you like uh, post-apocalyptic stuff. If you do prepping and uh, uh, what do you call um, homesteading? I know, I guess that's not it, but uh, preppers, the preppers. So, let's see the nature of this deck. Well, well, I'm thinking it's going to say that it's going to be able to deliver, you know, quick messages, I guess, very quickly to the point. It doesn't seem to mess around. I didn't see any, like, flowery images in in the cards like nothing superfluous it just gets to the point so all right so that's the h and the next card is what it's going to teach me so hopefully i can represent you but Oh, well, it's going to teach me how to do my tarot better, I guess. Become a master craftsman at my craft. So it's going to be good at doing that and also helping me to, to develop my abilities. So the next one is going to be how I'm going to feel about the deck. Oh, look at that. I'm going to be very playful with it. And it does have, although it doesn't have, I don't find it whimsical. But, um, you know, it. Uh, I can see where I would find it interesting. So, you know, perhaps it would uh, uh, instill in me some uh, youthful energy when I use the deck. But I think the deck is is wonderful deck, really. Really, it, it, it is on, uh, maybe not for everybody's uh, taste. I mean, you know, a lot of these images are, are sobering. But I think there's, uh, 
Oh, there's uh, some call for it. I can see some of the people that I've watched uh, on uh, online on YouTube. You know, perhaps some of those uh, talented readers, the younger ones and some older ones, you know, give it a go. Because I think the deck is still available. Must be. And, uh, but anyway, I just thank you so much for watching and sticking, sticking out to the end. And, uh, and this is my wish for you. Let's see now. Oh, please let it be something nice. <laughs> I'll cut the cards. I often do this when, I, as a, as a send off when I have a client in for a reading and their time is up. I, uh, say, well, this is my, my wish for you today. So you have a happy day. So there you go. Go learn. Either go teach somebody something or go learn. Go learn something spiritual. Go study the tarot. You know, the Herophant will study the uh, high priestess because the high priestess is the tarot. So anyway, so everybody have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.